Agriculture and economic prosperity operators in the agri sector calls for proper attention and effective policy direction from government to ensure growth. We have a report. An African rising and China and the United States of America battle for the soul of the continent. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello, a very good day to you and thanks for joining us. My name is Kenneth Odushala Stevenson and this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business information leader indeed we want to appreciate so many of you have called in and sent us an email and sms and whatsapp to connect inside business africa for that particular historic event and also the performance of the program especially with that particular report on agriculture and the economic prosperity which we started last week and we will be continuing with that again this week stay tuned for that when we come back right after this commercial break we'll bring you the details Welcome back. You're still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Thanks for staying with us. Agriculture remains the bedrock of economic prosperity of nation and Nigeria inclusive. It is against the backdrop of so many of the operators who have actually requested that we continue with this particular report that we've gone all the way to search for some of the operators in the northern region to talk about agriculture as economic prosperity of nations and indeed Nigeria. And it needs most of them have resolved that Ni Nigerian government, especially President Muhammad Buhari, should pay a lot of attention to agriculture to ensure Nigeria's diversification strategy will be sustained. Here's a report. The agricultural sector in Nigeria is critical for achieving economic growth, poverty alleviation and stability. If appropriate policy and the political will is strengthened, it is estimated to contribute approximately 55% of the country's employment, an increasingly significant figure. Yet, in terms of performance, the current situation in agriculture is a reversal of that during the Nigeria's early days when the sector experienced strong annual growth rates based on the production of high-value products. These earlier levels have proved that Nigeria has several important assets to realize a greater potential within the sector, including a high number of agroclimatic zones, good soil condition, good water supply, and skill within the population. Research factors are of different uh, brands. We have Steer, we have Fiat, we have New Holland, and we have Mansi Ferguson. So the Mansi Ferguson is one of the most accepted uh, brand nationwide. So that's why we lay more emphasis on it than other brands, but we still have them. And they are spare parts. Uh, actually, the terms agricultural engineer, there are two words here. We have agriculture and we have engineering. Agriculture is a practice whereby we grow animals and uh, plants. That is for the production of animal and plant. That is all about agriculture. But when, when you talk about engineering, it's the application of scientific principles in solving human problems. So that is engineering. Now, bringing engineering, applying engineering using scientific principles in solving agricultural problems but about the needs for agriculture, agricultural engineer. The focus is the farmer. What exactly will make this farmer better? What will 
to transit him from primitive agriculture to modern? What will transit him from primitive yield to very, very contemporary yield? If you look at the yield index globally, every time you look at Nigeria at the bottom of all the yield analysis. So we decided our vision, our mission will be to progressively bridge the gap between research and commercialization of value-adding agricultural technologies. In recent times, the agriculture and agro-industry sectors have been in decline in terms of productivity levels and an increasing trade imbalance. There has been a steady decline in the production and productivity in the agricultural sector, which has caused it to contract about 60% in real terms since the 1990s alone. Come here, well, you see, when you're talking about the sector of petroleum or oil sector and agricultural sector, first you should check the nation and which of the sectors, um, which of the sectors affect the population more. If you look at the business of uh, oil business, most of the people that are in oil business are rich people. When you look at the sector of agriculture, most of the people are local people and they cover more than 60% of our population. Most of them are farmers. If you go to our villages, they know they don't know any business apart from farming. So when you are giving subsidy to the oil sector, you are giving to some few people. But when you are giving subsidy to the agricultural sector, you are giving to a lot of people, they are helping the nation. So I think you can't even compare the two. Actually, as an engineer, I'm to oversee uh, the machinery is brought to us to know what, what is their specifications, their capacity, what they ought to do, and train the technicians on the latest equipment we have. We have our technicians, that is mechanics, locally called the mechanics, in which we carry our services and all that. I, as an engineer, is to oversee how the technicians execute maintenance and repair works. Yes, and we also train IT students. Yes, because uh, agri we have a uh, agri institute, we have College of Agri, we have a uh, agricultural engineering department in Faculty of Engineering BUK, we have one in ABU, we have another one in ATBU, we have some in University of Middle. So, at, in the course of their training, there is a six month IT program in which students go to various uh, uh, agro, agro based industries to have a knowledge concerning uh, skills full uh, engineering. I would say, Your Excellency, smallholder farmers are still in the main the biggest, the biggest, the biggest challenge in Nigeria regarding agricultural transformation. And what we have done is to look at a lot of crops that will be value adding, a lot of crops that the smallholder farmer would use and say, yes, something has happened to me. We took maize in the first instance and designed a very, very affordable and proven technology that will increase his yield and make him a better farmer by far. Value kit is our pet product and value kit is what will take the smallholder farmer of maize and of course, subsequently, we are going into other crops as well. Not only is there decline since the 1980s, but there has been a steady decline in recent years. Today, the real value of output by the agricultural sector has fallen to less than 5% of the GDP. Our staffs, we have a very qualified uh, engineering sector that deals with the training and uh, support of our, of our staffs. You see, like our chief engineer is a highly qualified uh, person that trains and have uh, a lot of knowledge about engineering and agriculture because that's our sector. So he's the one that we use to help our technicians and uh, enlighten them on how to 
of pet machine and how to teach our our customers because our main goal is to satisfy our customers because the customers are the people of the nation so our main aim is to help the nation to grow in terms of agricultural activities and the agricultural activities are the things is the main thing that we do believe is is going to change the economy of the nation actually once uh, there is new implement or new innovation we try try to see i have acquainted knowledge with such innovation or new ideas then at times i attend seminars workshops based on what i have gained i call the technicians to train them so that they will be updated in order to meet up with our customer demands this development notwithstanding, several key operators in all diverse sectors of the agricultural industry are making the necessary impact with diverse interest in the sector. As Sankak Nigeria Limited started working around 1977, around the ending of 1970s, so the sector of agricultural we are into is a mechanized agricultural sector, that is mechanized farming. We deal with tractors and uh, farming implements. We, uh, we are based, uh, our main interest is on uh, agricultural farming in a mechanized way, in a large scale. While the country is producing a lesser amount of agriculture related products and agriculture is contributing less to the GDP, the number of people engaged in the sector remains almost the same. Therefore, the per capita income of those engaged has declined. Yet, this does not need to be the case. By some estimates, the sector could be performing at five times its current level because there are domestic and international markets that will absorb and expand the output. Nigeria now needs to establish the right conditions within its market-led economy to once again promote growth and development of the agricultural sector. You say I will try to explain to him for agriculture to grow in Nigeria because I know he is a farmer, so he knows that farming is a very important thing in this nation. So all I have to do, I do not have to go through to tell him what farming is. I will just try to advise him on what to do, what to, do to help the growth of uh, agriculture. I will try to draw his attention to the issue of subsidy. You see, our farmers are ready. They need aid. If you are going to help them by subsidizing the machineries, the fertilizer, and that they are going to use, I think they are going to do well. So I will try to explain to him the importance of subsidy in the agricultural sector. It's going to help. And apart from that, uh, for people to farm well, they do not have to wait for rainfall. So they should be farming throughout the year. So the government have to create uh, dams and uh, irrigation systems, channels for them that will help them to farm throughout the year. So I think I will try to draw his attention towards that. Because our, not that our farmers have stopped farming, but their products were not being patronized as a result of high importation rate. Because as at 2010, if I can recall, about $400 billion was spent on rice importation. And you can imagine if such amount of money is spent in, in our agricultural sector here. What will be the life, the standard of living of our farmers? About seven hundred billion dollars was spent on wheat because we consume bread almost all the time. More of bread. We have patient, we have people that have diabetes with diabetes condition. They feed on wheat and so on. So if our farmer will be given the such kind of amount, you can imagine in the next few years how will their life style will be. The agricultural sector in Nigeria is in need of several measures to increase competitiveness and be better positioned in domestic through import substitution and export markets. This includes improvement to quality and land ownership, financing, infrastructure upgrades, new technologies and improvement in product quality. Because most of the things we are buying they have been imported and we have resources that we can produce all those raw materials. So we need our government need to be serious to visit the development we had before surfacing of oil sector. How does our agriculture was booming to the extent we generate revenue that will take care of our problems in the country? 
Now, by the time we visit that, they will now see, okay, we now visit. It is important for them to visit what brought about the negligence. What are the policies that brought the negligence? Because there must be a policy that does not favor the agricultural sector. That is why it was being neglected. Like you may have heard on the highlight of the program when we started earlier on, I talked about a very important report we are starting today, Africa Rising. It's a, it's a very important report on uh, focusing on African economy, which is becoming the bright of the other nations, especially Western countries and the Asia. China and America are currently battling for the soul of the continent. Recently, President Muhammad, Muhammad Buhari was in uh, the United States as a guest of the U.S. president. We talked about so many bilateral issues, uh, from military to uh, economics. And uh, China, while that particular thing was going on, that particular visit was going on to the state, Chinese government also issued statements in Nigeria. And you can imagine what is currently going on. And India is also on the top of the buying list of the Nigerian crew. What's actually the attraction, especially on Nigeria and South Africa? Nigeria currently, like we know, is the number one uh, economy in the African continent, followed by South Africa. What is going on? Let's find out. China often faces blistering criticism for its voracious appetites of Africa's natural resources. Chinese companies are spread across the continent, mining, logging and fishing to feed both hungry factories and people back home. In most, if not all, African countries, environmental protection laws are minimal at best, totally ineffective at worst, allowing Chinese companies to operate unregulated in this legal void. While in many cases this has led to horrific environmental abuses, in other instances local actors throughout Africa say the Chinese are often unfairly accused of operating in the informal economy that account for an estimated 90% of African jobs. The difference between the United States and Chinese foreign policies in Africa was on stark display in July when President Barack Obama made his landmark visit to Kenya and Ethiopia. The president brought along with him a vast agenda that transcends trade, democracy, human rights, gay rights, women's issues and on so on. Compare that to similar visit to both of these countries by either Chinese President Xi Jinping or Prime Minister Li Qipong who focused their attention exclusively on trade and development. In the run up to the president's trip, senior officials, including Obama himself, repeated their long held position that the administration is not concerned in the least about China's rapidly expanding presence on the continent. Given that Chinese trade with Africa now dwarfs the United States by 3 to 1, a growing number of analysts say it might be time for the US to take the Chinese in Africa more seriously. that's about all we have time for on Inside Business Africa for today. I want to thank you again for watching. But before I go, let me inform you again that in the 2015, the third edition in the series of the Nigeria's Construction Industry Hall of Fame, will be holding in Lagos on the 25th of September. And also don't forget our very important report on agriculture and the nation's economic prosperity will continue on Inside Business next week. Don't forget, it's been Kenneth Odushola Stevenson presenting Inside Business Africa. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.